Hello, I'm Michelle Crawford, and thanks for joining the next video in our Getting Started with Watercolor series. This is the third video in the series, and today we're going to talk all about the basics of paint application and different paint application techniques, how much water um, you should be using with your paints. So if you're uh, interested to learn more, um, I invite you to check out the first two videos in this series, which covered basic watercolor supplies, as well as the basics of color mixing. And I also, before we get started, want to say a warm welcome to everyone joining from the Watercolor for Real Beginners Facebook group. And now let's get started. First, we'll talk about the supplies we need for this project. We'll be learning different paint application techniques, but in the process, we'll also create a, a small piece of art. And so I do have a, a template here. It's really just a bunch of circles, so you don't necessarily need the template, uh, but just so you can see um, kind of what I'll be working with. This is available for download in the description, and I'll post it in our Facebook group as well. Next, you'll need some watercolor paper, your watercolor paints, and of course, you'll need um, a jar or two of clean water. And then I've got a pencil, some watercolor brushes. Um, I'm using today a six, a eight, and then I've got a big wash brush. We're gonna do a nice wet and wet background, and so that'll come in handy. Um, since I'm going to, you can hand, again, hand draw your circles, um, you can use the template to trace. I also have this nice um, circle making tool that uh, I'll be using today just to make it uh, quick and easy to make all my circles. And then I've got an eraser, some masking tape, as well as um, some uh, additional water and a spray bottle. I like to keep this handy to wet up my paints. So, and I always have um, some type of a towel or paper towel handy to dry off your brush and now we can begin so uh, as I said you'll want to have some tape um, to work with today so we are going to be doing some wet and wet and a lot of times when you do wet and wet and you wet your entire page you want to make sure that you tape the edge um, so that you have a nice clean edge um, normally if you're using a sheet of paper you would just tape your paper to a board. Today I'm using a watercolor block by Paul Rubens. These are um, really great to have. It really doesn't necessarily need to be taped because a watercolor block is glued on all four sides and so it will keep my paper um, nice and flat, keep it from warping. Um, but even sometimes when I'm doing painting in a watercolor block and I'm doing wet and wet, I still like to tape my edges because I like to get that nice crisp, clean white edge on the paper. And so You'll either be taping your paper to a board or if you want are using a block like me and want to have that edge I'm just gonna put um, some masking tape right along the edge of all four sides of my paper as I mentioned this uh, Paul Rubens paper um, is a nice option to have if you like watercolor blocks um, the their paper is 100% cotton which is really important when you're um, trying to purchase good quality watercolor paper. Cotton will, um, especially when you're doing wet and wet, cotton will absorb the water and keep your paper wet longer. And so um, if you are trying some of these techniques and especially with the wet and wet, you're not getting maybe the same effect. Um, it could be that, you know, your paper is drying too quickly. Um, you can try more water. And of course, you could always try um, to look for some 100% watercolor paper. A lot of people use arches, I definitely do as well, um, but it can be a little bit expensive. The reason why I really like the Paul Rubens, to be honest, is that it's a little less expensive than arches. Um, plus they, uh, it's a pretty high quality brand. I think the blocks a lot of times come with these leather portfolios, um, and so it's just a nice product, a little bit less expensive than some of the others out there. Okay, so I have taped all the edges of my paper and now I'm going to draw on the circles. So you don't have to follow this perfectly, but we're gonna be trying a, a showing you a different techniques for um, blending and mixing colors. And so it's important that you do have a couple of these circles, at least three of them where they're somehow overlapping or touching. 
And then the rest can be um, individual circles. Um, we want to have quite a few of those so we can try out some different techniques. Um, so I'm just going to kind of draw the same amount of circles here. They're not going to be exactly what, where and the same size, but I'm going to just try to get close. So using my, uh, my circle tool here, this um, comes in pretty handy if you're like me and I could just, again, draw these by hand, <laughs> but um, maybe not the best circle maker. So there I've got two that are overlapping, just like I have in the reference. And so, again, you want to have three places on your paper where there are two circles overlapping. I'm just kind of, again, placing circles around the same area as I see them in the reference. And we will um, lighten up our circles. And so I'm drawing them kind of dark so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, and you can see I made a mark right there. That's no worry at all. We're gonna lighten this with our eraser and I'll be able to remove that mark. And so over here, I'm gonna have two more that overlap. Two. I'm going off the page. And the other one up here. And then two more that overlap up here. If you look at the reference, I've got three of those, so. Okay. Looks like I have um, just as many circles. Mine looks, of course, a little bit different. I made, I made my circles some different sizes, but um, this is totally okay. Make this your own. Um, we're going to choose our own color palettes and you can make your circles any size uh, or layout that you'd like. And now we're going to lighten up these lines with an eraser. So here I have an kneaded eraser. You can use um, just a regular eraser, but what's nice about a kneaded eraser, and you can find these at your craft store in the same places you would find a, you know, your regular erasers, but it's malleable, kind of like putty or clay in a way. And so um, it's, uh, we can basically use it for a long time when it gets covered with pencil, then you just kind of knead it and it gets a little more clean again. And another reason why I like to use this is I don't necessarily want to erase everything <laughs> that I draw underneath my watercolor, but I don't always want it to show through. And so being able to just kind of press this kneaded eraser into the paper where I've made a mark is a really easy way to lighten it up without removing um, too much, but definitely you're gonna remove any like graphite dust or anything left behind that might smudge in your paint. So just lightly going to lift some of my marks and you can also use the kneaded eraser like a regular eraser, rub it like that. Um, like I said, any any really any eraser will do. Uh, and if you like the look of those lines, um, or you like pen and wash, you know, feel free to leave them dark. You can even go back in later and um, to do like line and wash. You can make them darker with a pen after we finish the the watercolor. Completely up to you. Lifted my tape a little bit right there. I'm just gonna kind of push that down. We don't end up with the paint bleeding behind the tape. Okay, so now we have prepared our paper. Um, we're ready to paint. Put away my eraser. Right, so the first things first, we have, um, I'm gonna have two jars of water handy. One that I'm gonna wash my brush off in, the water will get dirty, and then I'm gonna keep a jar of clean water handy. We're gonna use that to make some different color blends and bleeds and also wet up our paper before we try some of these techniques. Before we start um, painting, let's first talk about mixing our paint. And so watercolor is water-based and essentially as you add water to the paint, the paint becomes lighter. And so for example, 
I take my yellow and you always want to wet up your paints. They'll, if you have a pan set like this, they'll be dry. I like to start by just spraying down my paints, getting them nice and wet. If you want to have a little bit of a puddle there, um, and you can just wet the ones you plan to use, but I'm not quite sure which I'm going to use yet, so I just kind of wetted them up. And then um, you'll want to activate the paint with your brush. And so you, you can see I'm just kind of um, almost kind of stirring up the water and the paint together to get them to mix there in the pan. And that's how you activate your paints. And so right now I have really just activated that and put my paintbrush right into the paint. And so when I swatch this color, I'm going to have a pretty saturated yellow. The paint is very thick. It's not too wet. Um, it pretty much stays where you know, I put it. Um, but it's also very uh, saturated or the color is dense. It's bright. In order to lighten up this color, you might think as a beginner that maybe you would add white and you likely don't see white in your watercolor palette. Actually, what you'll do is add water to this. So couple ways to do that. One, I could take the brush that I just, you know, grabbed that pigment straight off of my palette and I can dip my brush in water. I'm dipping it and then just kind of tapping on the edge and then that should lighten up the color a bit. You can see it's a little bit more translucent that time. If I dip it again and kind of tap it and go in, I'm going to get even a lighter yellow. And if I were to keep doing that, I would continue to get lighter and lighter and lighter until we're almost using clear water. So if you want to have a light version of a color, you're going to add more water. And the, the most pigmented is going to come straight from your palette. You may hear something called a dry brush technique or dry painting. That's honestly, um, your paint is always going to be wet, but if you don't have a lot of water at all on your brush, you'll be able to get more kind of drier looking strokes or if it gets really dry, sometimes you'll even like miss some grooves in the paper and get a really textured effect. That's um, a technique you can use. Um, but when you hear a dry brush, it usually means um, that the brush you're starting with is dry. And so if I were to dry my brush, touch that paint, it feels more tacky than smooth. And you'll notice that I'm starting to get now some texture in between the pigment on the paper. If you can see that right here, where you know you're not getting a nice even wash, you're kind of seeing that. And so if that happens to you, likely you're not using enough water. <clears throat> Also, if you add another way to kind of water down your colors to take some from your palette or from your pan and put it on the palette here, and then you can just put some water on your brush and mix it right here on your palette, you're gonna get a lighter version of the color. And the more water you add, the lighter the color you're gonna get. And so a lot of times when we say a light wash, that's when you take some color, put it on your palette, add some water to it, and then now you've got a nice light wash. Um, and this is also important to remember when we're doing our wet and wet because um, the more water you add to a color, the more lighter or washed out it's going to be. And so if you're trying to do wet and wet techniques and wanna have um, a darker color, you're gonna wanna probably take paint more from your pan, make sure it's wet first, um, or there will be times where you're mixing up uh, a light wash in your pan, in your palette. So now we know about water and paint, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is, um, if you have a, a big wash brush, we're gonna um, use this, or you can still use one of your round brushes, kind of choose the biggest one you have, and we're gonna start by using clean water to wet up our entire surface. So I'm opening a second jar of clean water and I'm just going to start brushing this onto the paper. A lot of people 
art, watercolor artists will start with something called an underpainting where they're just kind of like wetting up the paper and then really lightly kind of laying out the colors and where they'll place them in their painting. But really it's, it's just kind of a background that you end up painting over. It's a way to help kind of place things on. Um, what we're going to do today is this is a kind of an abstract um, idea that we're painting here. And so we're going to try to make just a light kind of abstract soft background um, behind all these circles. And so the way we're going to do that is by first wetting this up. And you'll know that it's um, wet enough once it's got like a glean to it, a shine, but it's not like dripping anywhere. If I wrote, you know, tip the paper, it's not dripping off the page. And so you don't want it to be too wet, um, but you also don't want it to be too dry. And depending on your type of paper, it might absorb a lot of water, might not absorb much. So if it seems to be drying on you, just add a little bit more water. And now we have a nice wet canvas. So for this background, I'm just gonna kind of start to pick out the colors I'm gonna use for mine and um, everybody pick the colors that, that sound best for you. We can all make a really unique painting from this, but we're just gonna start to like kind of drop in color and spread it around um, and maybe test out um, what a, a wet on wet uh, would look like on what some of these circles. So um, I'm just gonna keep using my big wash brush and I've already got some of that yellow mixed up there. So I'm gonna start dropping some of that in and really just, again, this is all wet. So these are uh, colors are gonna blend with each other. With watercolor, um, when you lay paint down, it will follow the water. So our entire canvas right now is wet. And so whatever paint we're laying down is just going to kind of mix and blend with all, all over the page. Um, and depending on again, how wet or dry your paper is will help determine um, how much of the color blends and bleeds versus how much of it will stay in place. Also, watercolor is going to dry uh, lighter than it goes on when it's wet. And so right now I've, I've just kind of wet this and dropped in some color. It will dry lighter, um, but we do want it to continue to be a nice light background. So now that we've got our paint applied, we're just gonna kind of spread it around. I went ahead and rinsed off my brush and dried it a little bit on my towel. And now I'm just gonna use it to blend all that paint around on the background. And you'll notice this is um, the first wet and wet technique or wet on wet technique that we're learning where we applied water, got our entire, to our entire canvas. So we got it completely wet and then we're taking wet paint and applying it to the canvas. And you'll notice, um, I'm just kind of blending with this brush, getting the paint to move around. You notice we have this very soft, um, blend of colors in the background. The colors are starting to like mix to each other and they're very soft and kind of just blend into one another. There's not a, any like harsh lines with this. And so this is um, a technique that you'll use to make really soft backgrounds, soft color blends. We're using a lot of water here and a little bit of paint. So you're going to get a nice soft background. While this page is still wet, because um, before we move on to painting this, most of these circles, we're going to want this to dry. Um, but let's experiment. Um, pick one of your maybe smaller circles to be a circle that you know might be a little bit blurred in the background. So I'm going to pick this one right here and pick any color. I'm going to make this one pink. And so what I've done just now is I wetted my brush went into my paint and then put it on my palette and I don't want to go in you don't usually go in with a full um, saturation of color so a lot of times I'll put paint on my palette grab a little bit of water and then mix up a wash this would be kind of a medium wash but you'll see it's it's um, definitely watery and we want this to be translucent where you know you can see some light through the paint paint um, and so we want to have a little bit warm water so I'm going to take this kind of translucent paint and I'm going to just trace around one of these circles 
And remember my background is all wet and I'll even fill it in. Do your best and then now just lift up your brush and watch what the paint does. So as I mentioned, the paint will go where the water is. And so because this entire background is wet, when I put wet paint down onto a wet surface, it's going to follow the moisture. And so as you're watching this, you're gonna see the paint that you added, even though you placed it right all around that circle, it's going to start bleeding outside of the circle. It's gonna start blending into that background. You see that? If you rotate or tip your paper, um, you'll get more movement. Um, but this is a way that you can get a nice soft edge when um, this circle would be kind of blurred in the background if you're trying to get that nice soft blend of an edge um, in your painting. You can try the wet and wet technique with wetting the paper first and then applying your paint. So that will continue to, paint will continue to move as this dries. And if you like that, you can leave it. Um, you could also, at this point, say you've you know, added too much pigment and because everything is still wet, it's also still movable. And so for example, if I were to paint another one of these, let's put it over here, I'll add a circle to my design. Oh no, I put that in the wrong place. Um, I really you know, like the pink. It would be nice if that were part of my background, but um, you know, I didn't want to have that there. Because everything is still wet, I can go back in and start moving that paint around and it just kind of becomes part of that nice wet background. So I could do that on this right, this right now, the one that is here, but I really like that effect. I think it'll be a great um, practice to see the difference once this is all finished of what a wet and wet edge might look like versus um, the next one we'll do, which is a wet on dry. So before we can move on to wet on dry, we'll need to wait for this um, to dry completely. If you uh, are impatient like me, you could use a heat tool or even a hair dryer to um, dry this instead of waiting, or you can t pause the video right here and take a break. So. Um, one moment, I'll go ahead and get this dried and then we'll be right back. All right, now my paper is completely dry. You can see that that um, background is now you know, much lighter and very, very soft. And then if you look at the circle that we painted wet on wet, um, you should see a lot of that color you know, bleeding outside of that, that circle. And so now we are going to compare what uh, wet and wet a paint application would look like versus a wet on dry. And so we um, go ahead and take one of your smaller brushes and then find one of your um, circles that's all by itself. So now we're going to go ahead and take you know the same color that you just used, the same kind of mix here of that color you used on the first one, and we're going to do the same thing on this next circle but we are now applying wet paint to dry paper. And as you apply the paint, start by just kind of outlining the circle, you'll notice that you have a lot more control over where the paint goes because the water itself is currently controlled by the paint brush. We don't have any water on our surface. We're able to um, much more precisely place the paint and it's not going to go again past where we've applied water or paint already. And so with a wet on dry paint application technique, you can get a very crisp, clean edge and we call those hard edges. And with the wet on wet, you're going to get a much softer edge or even a very, very soft blend like we did with our background. So there's our example of wet on dry. Now, what happens when we layer 
paints together. So when you, many times when you're working on a watercolor painting, you're going to start with really your lightest colors, um, like I did with this background, and then as you paint on top of the lighter colors, you're gonna build up the, the depth and the darker values in your painting. Um, because of that, sometimes we really like to layer. What's really unique about layering with watercolor is watercolor is translucent, and so you really can um, layer things in a way where they're kind of stacked on top of each other and it looks almost as though you can see through it. Um, so we're going to learn how to do that. And then there's also um, times where you've got maybe two different ob objects or areas in your painting and where they come together. Um, those Instead of you know looking like two separate shapes that are stacked on top of each other, they just kind of blend into one another. And we're going to learn how to do that as well. So you should have um, three places on your uh, drawing here where you've got two circles that overlap with each other. Um, choose one of those. And if you'd like, you can change colors. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab um, this purple I've got here. So kind of a medium wash of the purple. And I'm going to paint uh, one of my circles that intersect over here with a wet on dry. So I'm going to get this nice crisp clean edge on this purple circle. Um, sometimes I like to rotate my paper just to get a better angle. It's kind of helpful to me when making circles. All right, so let's kind of fill an edge and then start to fill it in. And you can see it's already starting to dry on me a little bit. And when you're applying light washes like this, you can go right back into your wash that you've mixed up on your palette. But another tip is to just go and dip your brush in your clean water. And then you can use that to uh, re-wet your entire surface and also continue to spread around paint that's already down. Um, of course, you can always, again, go back in and grab more paint if you'd like as well. Um, but we're going to fill in this entire circle and then let it dry. So here we're going to do layering two wet on dry circles and then we'll compare that to um, how two wet on wet circles might intersect. And so before we can move on to the next step with this, um, we'll want that to dry. While we're doing that, Let's go to one of our other intersections and do the same thing. We're going to put down a wet layer of paint on one of the circles. And you do want to make sure that this stays wet as we work um, And now, say we want this other circle to be, I'm going to change colors and go with uh, a kind of an aqua color. That's very pretty. So two very different contrasting colors. So I'm, I'm going along, I'm painting, I'm going to, you know, get my nice clean edge around the outside of this and start to fill it in. Okay. And now they're going to intersect. And so I want to be able to see how they intersect. So now I'm filling in the rest of the circle here. And what's happening is where these two colors are meeting, um, right now they're starting to blend together. And so I've painted one color, a wet color, on top of an already other wet color. And so because both pigments are wet, they're gonna start to blend and, and bleed into one another. Um, What's the difference between a blend and a bleed? Um, a bleed is typically when you've got one color kind of rushing into another color. Um, you might hear the term blooms and we'll experiment with some of those. And then a blend is when, you know, there's a very gradual um, change between the colors, very similar to what we have in our, our background uh, wash here where the colors just kind of don't, can't really tell where one starts and one ends. Um, and so we're getting kind of a combination effect of that here. I've basically laid down the 
the paint paints on top of one another and so they're starting to blend and bleed um, and there's different ways to get different effects and so typically if you want to have a bleed you'll really just kind of touch the colors together and let them naturally do their own blending or mixing rather um, just grabbing some more concentrated versions of these colors to kind of show you how they might bleed together. And so you can see the colors definitely mixing together to form a third color. Um, but then the edges of where these two meet are gonna be more blurred like you see here with our wet on wet circle. And so you're gonna get a very um, unpredictable kind of fun um, color blend or bleed mixture here. Let's look at how we could make this a little more subtle and we, if we wanted to um, have more blends between our shapes. And so maybe, for example, you've got a, a painting that has a lot of leaves and you want the leaves to be separate, separate, but in certain places, you know, you kind of have this uh, lost edge. And so we're gonna do a similar paint application to this over here, um, but we're going to, to try to get more of a blend between these colors, because here we clearly have um, the purple I laid down, they're mixing together to form this kind of a blue color in between, bluish purple, and I've got the turquoise. And even though we've got a very soft um, line in between the colors, um, they're still kind of forming really three separate colors. Over here, we're going to try to blend them and make it a little bit more gradual. So let's start with our purple on one side. Or whichever color you chose. And we did get these a little bit thicker last coat. So let's just went in more pigment, less water that time. Because uh, mine was a little bit watery. And now we're going to go grab our second color. In this case, from my case, aqua. And you see, I got, as soon as I touched them together, because I've got a very wet brush and very wet paint there, you saw the bleed happen where it really quickly ran into the aqua color, ran into the purple. So that's a um, great example of a bleed. So now, you know, we've got them overlapping. But if we want these to be, um, the transition to be a little more seamless, I'm going to rinse off my brush with clean water. And I'm going to dry it. And so I've got not a completely dry, but a damp brush. And now very lightly, I'll kind of scrub my brush back and forth between these two colors. Um, you can rinse off and dry it again and really start to blend them a little bit more. I kind of call this technique scrubbing, um, but you're really just trying to mix the pigments together. Um, if you you know, in doing so, you've maybe lifted it too much and you want it a little bit darker. You can always go back in and add more pigment or just kind of push them closer together. Get more of the purple. You can see we're getting that third color in the middle, but again, if I rinse off my brush, dry it off so it's clean and damp, you know, I can go in and get more blending and try to soften the blend between these colors so it's much more seamless and see I've still got a little bit of a harsh blend between the purple and this kind of second purple that formed. Another thing you can do here is to kind of tilt your paper and let those colors mix with each other and you can see um, how we're getting a much softer blend between these two shapes. It's almost that they kind of merge into one and so that's um, a great technique for blending together two colors. Um, and also I think um, this technique helps you to have you know, a little more dimension in your painting, have them be a little bit loose. Um, this one, of course, still very, a lot of contrast between the colors. And it depends on how much that bleed is going to happen um, based on how wet the paints are. The more water, the more bleeding. Um, but very different from um, what we're about to do over here. And this isn't quite dry yet. We'll give that a little bit more time. Um, while we're waiting for that, let's look at how we can do some wet on dry blending. And for example, 
I'm going to stick with uh, this turquoise color for now. So one of the ways that you could make a, a circle, say we want it darker on one side than, a, than another, um, there's two ways to, to do a, a single color blend where we're essentially going to apply the color and then we want it to kind of fade off and get lighter until it becomes nothing. So I'm going to wet the circle up completely. And then on one side, I'm just going to drop in some color. And so very quickly, we're getting some nice bleeds and that you could just leave it and let it do its thing. Um, you could also come back in with a, a damp brush and try to soften some of the blend. And so you're basically getting a really light transition here. Uh, because we've wet the whole thing, again, it should start to continue to blend. You can tilt your paper and get kind of this nice transition from, you know, transparent to a little bit more opaque or a lighter color to a darker color. And when it's wet on wet, you can kind of keep working with the paint. If you end up thinking you have too much pigment and you want to lift it, Again, wash and dry off your brush. And then if you just apply a lot more pressure, you'll be able to lift up some of the, the paint and get lighten it up even. Okay, so that's a wet and wet way, but you can actually do this also with a wet on dry technique. So the circle right below that, I'm gonna grab that same color and I'm gonna grab um, some of the paint. I've already got kind of a medium wash on my palette and I'm just going to put some of this paint right around the edge and then I'm going to wash off my brush and then with clean water I'm just going to kind of touch the edge of that paint. This is a little bit of a combination technique because I am using clean water to spread this um, but the paper is not all pre-wet so it is technically um, a wet on dry. And so you can see where I've not placed water yet, the pigment is not running there. So even if I tilt it or move it around, it's only going to go where I've put that water. Um, so I've picked up a little bit of pigment on my brush. I'm going to go ahead and rinse it off again, even dry it a bit, and then try to spread the rest of that. And you can see with this blending technique, it's very similar to the wet and wet we just did up top, but I've got a lot more control as far as how far I want the paint to go. Um, when you're doing wet and wet blending like that, you're um, giving a little bit of freedom, a little more freedom to the, the paint to kind of go where it wants. Whereas here, I went in first with just paint and then um, kind of started to spread it with some clean water. All right, that's still drying a bit. So let's just kind of start to fill in the rest of our circles. Um, one thing we haven't done yet is let's do some color bleeds. Um, what and what color bleeds? So this big circle on the bottom, go and pick um, any color to paint that. I'm gonna go with, well, I'll go with my bright pink. I'm just gonna fill that in completely. I'm just gonna explore some other fun ways to get some effects with colored blends and bleeds. Again, my brush got a little dry there, so I just went in with some clean water and can continue to spread this if I want it to have a light wash. It's a great way to do it. I'm able to fill the entire circle. Of course, if I wanted it to be darker, I would just go for more pigment. And once it's wet, you can even just kind of like drop it in certain places and then move it around. Now I can also use wet and wet to get some really interesting textures. So with this area that's already wet with paint, I'm going to go ahead and grab a second color. Um, make sure there's some water in it and then just barely touch the already wet area and watch how the paint really blooms. This is called a, a bloom. It's, it's a really a, a bleed 
but if you have this happening in your watercolor where you place paint and it's moving really quickly away from where you placed it, um, you probably have you know too much water or this is a really great way to get some interesting texture effects. And so that one, I put some blue dots on. Let's do some purple ones. So we're already getting a really interesting effect here just by dropping the paint in. Um, if you wanted, you could, you know, blend some of this out and you just kind of end up with a very interesting, more blended look. Um, just kind of play around with these different paint application techniques and find things that work well for you. Um, maybe even we want to just drop in some more color on this side and do a softer blend across. Just rinsing and drying my brush. And right now, just kind of experimenting and learning how to navigate the watercolor. So really quickly, we just used like two or three different techniques here and we're able to create this really interesting shape. All right, so this one is just about dry. So here's where we're gonna see that translucent effect where you, it looks like we have two objects that you can see through and they're kind of layered on top of one another. So this first circle that I painted, um, it's it was a nice light wash, so it's translucent and it has dried. And so now I'm gonna do a really light wash of this turquoise color I've got here. And since this is dry, again, we're painting wet on dry and we're just going to do a wet on dry circle here. in now in this example this is where you're able to see through the watercolor and so we did our wet into wet here and got this interesting bleed it definitely formed a, a new color um, and there's some soft edges around it but it's um, very much uh, abstract and uncontrolled. Whereas here we um, did the same thing, but then used our brush to blend the colors together. So we're getting a nice transition here because we did a wet on to dry both times, even though we overlayered our paint, you can see where they overlap, that we did get a new color, but it's almost as though one is on top of the other and you can see through it. So if you're looking for that type of effect, that means that you're going to want to paint a, a layer and let it dry and then paint another layer on top of it. Um, and you do want to make sure it's like completely dry. Um, I think that we were probably like 95% dry when I placed that. So you're seeing a little bit of movement of the pigment underneath, but if you let this dry completely, that, that shouldn't happen. So now you've got um, lots of different ways to apply paint. Um, feel free to go ahead and fill in your last two circles with any combination of these techniques um, and just be creative and try something new. All right, so now that we've got this one almost dry, I do want to show you one last blending technique. So we blended these together by um, making them both wet and then mixing them together. But here in this instance where we've blended one color into basically white by getting using pure water on one side and, and color on the other, we can actually do the same thing with another color from the other side and blend it over and end up again with um, kind of a color blend where the colors overlap, similar to the effect that you see here. So just to, to show this, I'm going to take another one of 
another color here, take the purple. And remember when I did this, I laid down a little bit of color on the edge and then I washed and dried off my brush. So I'm really just got a damp um, blending brush and I'm just gonna use kind of the same scrubbing technique that I would on a wet on wet blend, but really just kind of trying to very lightly, and I'll dry off my brush kind of in between, um, trying to spread out that little bit of paint and water so that, you know, I can end up having these overlap and meet one another, but still have it feel like a very soft um, blend. So if you're looking to have more controlled blending, that's another option where you're you're laying, layering um, wet on two wet on dry layers, similar to how we did this. Um, you can get some really interesting um, glazing effects. So glazing is when you you know, lay one water watercolor color down, and then you wait for it to dry. You drip, put another color on top of it with your intent to change the color um, or um, give it a different hue. And so that is definitely one effect you can use. All right, so there we have it, our fun, interesting <laughs> circles. Um, next step is, to, before we remove our tape and check out our final result, is to make sure to um, dry this completely. So again, I'm gonna uh, dry mine if you want to use your heat tool um, or hair dryer, or simply take a quick break. All right, my painting is now completely dry, so I'm going to take off my tape. This is always the best part, and you know, by now our background really doesn't look very dark since we put down um, some darker colors on these circles, but when we peel the tape, it will all be revealed. It's got a little bit of tearing there. Um, be a little bit gentle when you're peeling your tape so you don't um, do what I just did and kind of peel up your paper, but this is really just a practice so I'm not that worried about it. And there we have it. Not only did you learn how to apply paint in lots of different ways, you ended up with a nice, cute art piece. All right, so um, again, if you were taping down your paper onto a board, you um, have already got your final step complete, but I am working on a watercolor block. And so again, these are um, glued on all four sides and there's a little slit right here to place something like a palette knife. And so you just put that in here and then run it around the edge and it is removing the sheet of paper from the block. Very convenient, um, great for painting on the go. And there we have it, your watercolor paint application masterpiece. <laughs> Thank you for watching today. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and will continue to watch um, for more videos in the, uh, in the series. Um, and also join us on the Watercolor for Real Beginners Facebook group.